In today's video, I will be talking about nitrous oxide or laughing gas. It is a gaseous anesthetic commonly used in dentistry and in patient sedation. Like the dissociative anesthetic ketamine, nitrous oxide also blocks the NMDA receptors. But does it also share the rapid antidepressant effects of ketamine? That's what we're going to find out. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel Kohtala. I'm a neuropharmacologist studying the mechanisms of drug action in the brain. In this video, I'll try to give a brief perspective into what we know about nitrous oxide as a treatment of depression. And I'll have a special focus on a recent uh, clinical trial. This topic is especially close to my heart since I've been studying the molecular mechanisms of nitrous oxide for the past five years or so. In fact, I started my PhD studies uh, involving the molecular mechanisms of various anesthetic drugs. And it was around that time in 2015 when the first pilot study of nitrous oxide for the treatment of depression was also published. This proof-of-principle study by Peter Nagele and colleagues demonstrated that an hour of 50% nitrous oxide had rapid antidepressant effects in a small population of patients. This put me on a research path that I'm still following today, but that is perhaps a topic for another video. Now, one small clinical trial is hardly enough to demonstrate a new drug to be clinically useful in treating a depression. It happens that just a few weeks ago, another clinical study was published that essentially demonstrated the antidepressant effects of nitrous oxide in treatment-resistant patients. This new study, called a phase 2 trial of inhaled nitrous oxide for treatment-resistant major depression, is a phase 2 trial with a slightly larger patient population than the first pilot study. I'll give my quick perspective on this study, but I refer you to read the original publication for more precise details. I have included the link in the description down below. Now, in the study, patients were randomly assigned in a crossover fashion to receive a single one-hour inhalation of 50% nitrous oxide, 25% nitrous oxide or placebo, which consisted of air and oxygen. The primary outcome of this study was a change in the Hamilton Depression Rating Scale. A single one-hour inhalation of nitrous oxide was found to significantly improve depressive symptoms when compared to placebo, whereas there was no statistically significant difference between 25 and 50% concentrations of the gas. The incidence of adverse effects significantly declined with the dose, suggesting that 25% nitrous oxide may have relatively comparable efficacy with a higher dose of nitrous oxide, but with much better tolerability. However, at the two weeks time point, some of the secondary outcome measures like the montgomery Osberg depression rating scale, the quick inventory of depressive symptoms or POMs show a strong response for 50% nitrous oxide. Long periods of nitrous oxide inhalation are known to induce a variety of adverse effects, of which nausea, vomiting and headache are likely the most inconvenient. This is probably why the study wanted to compare a higher dose with a lower dose of nitrous oxide. Looking at the list of adverse effects, things like laughing, haziness, feeling disconnected or high are also included. There's even one patient who had a car crash within 24 hours of the treatment, perhaps an unrelated event, but who knows. Considering the fact that these are patients suffering from severe treatment-resistant depression, I find these results quite promising. The majority of patients saw a marked reduction in their depressive symptoms throughout the completion of the study, where each received two sessions of nitrous oxide and one placebo treatment over the course of three months. At completion, 85% had improved 
around 55% had what is called a treatment response and around 40% were in remission. There are, of course, many sources of possible confounding factors in this study, most notably the blinding. The majority of patients correctly guessed their treatment group. There were also some changes in antidepressant medication for some patients uh, during the trial. Moreover, despite a four-week interval between the treatment sessions, some patients showed sustained improvement of their depressive symptoms and did not return to the pre-treatment baseline level of depression severity, resulting in carryover effects from previous administrations. While the number of patients in this study still remains very small, the study does support the findings of the previous pilot study, suggesting that nitrous oxide indeed has rapid antidepressant effects in a difficult-to-treat patient population. I think this study will direct more attention towards studying nitrous oxide as a putative rapid-acting antidepressant drug and a novel treatment of depression. It could be also useful for the treatment of other psychiatric disorders. But ultimately, more studies are required to truly understand the clinical significance of these effects. Moreover, since nitrous oxide is not a very established treatment, studies are also required to more thoroughly address dose-response related issues, as well as the study of the optimal duration of administration. Nitrous oxide has very rapid pharmacokinetics and is essentially excreted unchanged, thus allowing for various different uh, administration paradigms. One which I'm particularly interested in is an intermittent dosing schedule of shorter durations of nitrous oxide exposure uh, repeated for a certain duration of time. Anyways, uh, this study leaves me quite excited to follow nitrous oxide as a possible treatment of depression. What do you think about nitrous oxide as a treatment of psychiatric disorders? Feel free to take part in the discussion in the comments down below. Also, remember to subscribe to my channel and press like to support my future efforts in producing neuropharmacology content. Thank you for watching and until next time.